before I'm going to answer the questions, I'm going to repeat what I was doing there. Let's just go and look at the image that's being provided. Uh, Okay, if you look at this question, we have been provided with a satellite image. Now, a satellite image, as you can see, and they've given us information, the southwestern cape, so obviously I assume, we can assume that this is South Africa, and then we have a travel disturbance, not a travel disturbance over here, but we have a disturbance taking place over there and this disturbance first of all just to have a look at it look at the where the formation takes place at the 30 degree latitude and there's the 40 degree latitude and there's the 50 degree latitude now a couple of a couple of tricks that we can apply over here if you just have a look over here we can see what type of circulation is taking place over here definitely clockwise circulation. Now, as you can see, the system moves from west to east. Now, if we just quickly have a look at the questions, if you look at the questions that's being answered over here, they ask you, what type of pressure system Identify the low pressure weather system shown in the satellite image. Now, first of all, with the concepts that we've learned in term one, we know between the latitudes of 30 degrees and 50 degrees north and south of the equator, we experience mid-latitude cyclones. So the name basically explains this weather situation by itself. Mid-latitude because our latitude stretched from zero degrees where the equator is up until where up until 90 degrees. So if you look at the latitude positions, it's 30, 40, 50, that is mid latitudes. Now when we learned about climate, we've looked at cyclones. And what do we know about cyclones? It's low pressure systems. Now, the question asks, what type of low-pressure system is in a satellite image? Now, what do we know about cyclones? It's a low-pressure system. Very importantly, we know this is in the southern hemisphere. How do we know that? Because we can see the southwestern cape. And what do we know about low-pressure systems? It's clockwise circulation in the southern hemisphere. So there's our answer. We can be able to identify it on our satellite image that this is a mid-latitude cyclones. You can just see the latitudinal positions. If we go to our next question quickly. Give evidence from the satellite image to support your answer to question 1.3.1. I've just done it a couple of seconds ago. We have identified our different latitudinal positions over here. It's mid latitudes. Okay. Now let's just quickly have a look at question 1.3.3. Account for the direction in which this low pressure weather system moves. Okay. Now, I've mentioned it on here. This whole system moves from west to east. Now, once again, let me explain why it moves west to east. I just want to extend my page because, once again, we're revising a bit over here. So, if we look at our primary circulation of air, we have our equator situated over there. We have our 30 degree latitude, 60 degree latitude. And we've got our 90 degree latitudes. So we're revising a bit about our pressure belts over here. We know at the equator low pressure belt exists. We know at the 30 degree 
latitudinal position a high pressure belt exists. We know at the 60 degree latitude there's a low pressure belt and we know there's a high pressure belt at the 90 degree. What do we know? Air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure and that is known as wind. Okay, now this is basically revising grade 11 work but it's vitally important to be able to understand how these cyclones travel because we've learned about these concepts in grade 11. Now, the low pressure exists over here because it's very hot at the equatorial regions. Insulation travels a very short distance at the equatorial regions. A high pressure exists at the 90 degree latitude line because it's furthest away from and receives less insulation, not direct insulation, but rather indirect insulation cast in a shadow. Now then we have a low pressure system. What do we know about low pressure systems? It's rising air. But this air over there rises, not because it's warm, because it's being forced to rise. So we got conversions of air over there. Before I'm going to continue going back to the subpolar low pressure, we have the subtropical low pressure belt. High pressure belt, apologies. So we have the ITCZ, air moving, converging to one, one another. We experience the low pressure belt. Air diver, diverges in the upper atmosphere. So distinctly, what do we have? We have our three polar cells. Three cells, polar, feral, and Hadley. Now, what do we know? Air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure, but once again, we have learned that air doesn't move in a straight line. What happens? It's being deflected. And what do we call that deflection of wind? It's known as Coriolis force. What is the Coriolis force? The winds are being deflected because the Earth's rotation around its own axis. So in theory, air can't move into a straight line from the high pressure to the low pressure. It can't. So what happens? Because of the Coriolis force, it's being reflected to the left in the southern hemisphere. The simple rule of thumb for Coriolis force is when you stand with your back against the wind in the southern hemisphere, it will re reflect to your left hand side. When you stand with your back against the wind in the northern hemisphere, it will reflect to your right hand side. So in this case, the air being reflected left because it moves from the high pressure to the low pressure. From the subtropical high pressure belt, the air moves to the subpolar low pressure belt. It's getting deflected to the left. Once again, air moves from the high pressure belt, subtropical high pressure belt, to the equatorial low pressure belt, and is being deflected to the left. Now, wind is named from the direction it's coming from, very importantly. Now, these are our trade winds. So, what do we have over here? We have our polar easterlies. What do we have over here? Air moves from the high pressure to the low pressure. We have our westerlies. And then the air moves from the high pressure to the low pre pressure. We have our tropical easterlies. Now coming back to our question. If you look at the situation over there, where is the mid-latitudes? Let me just circle them. Right, where do we find our mid-latitudes? Uh, mid Over there. This is where we find mid-latitude cyclones. And in which direction do they move? In the westerly wind belt. So they move from west to east. If you go back to the diagram, it moves from west to east because look at the latitudinal position. If you look at question 1.3.4, why does this low pressure weather system have a greater impact on South Africa in the winter? Love this question. If we go back to the bottom, I'll quickly experience it to you. Now, South Africa is being dominated by the subtropical high pressure belt. If I 
can draw stereophically like that. There's our 30 degree latitude line. Now we are being dominated by three high pressure systems, anti-cyclones. So let's just go back to the basics again. A cyclone is a low pressure system, it's rising air. An anticyclone is a high pressure system, it's sinking air. Let me write it down so you can remember. A high pressure, a sinking, and a low pressure is rising air. Now because we are situated on the subtropical high pressure system uh, belt, we are being dominated by three high pressure systems. The South Indian high pressure system, we have the South Atlantic high pressure system, and during winter we experience the Kalahari high pressure system. Now just a couple of characteristics of these high pressure systems. We know it's sinking air, it's associated with calm conditions, usually clear blue skies, it's anti-clockwise circulation of air. Now, the movement of these high pressure systems do change over seasons. Now, if I can just quickly draw a mid latitude cyclone while we, and yeah, so our mid latitude cyclones usually affect the southwestern Cape in winter. So there's the cold front, attached to it is our warm front, we know the system moved from west to east. Very importantly, remember it's only the warm cold front conditions that has an influence on South Africa's climate. We don't experience the warm front. Why not? It's too far down south. So we experience the cold front. Now, the reason we only experience this cold front conditions, mid latitude cyclones during winter, is because our South Atlantic high pressure system during winter migrates north. So it gives the opportunity for these mid latitude cyclones to affect the southwestern Cape, bringing much needed rainfall to this area. So if you look at the rest of South Africa, we experience usually summer rainfall, whereas Cape Town experience winter rainfall. It's also known as Mediterranean climate. They experience the rainfall during winter. It's known as Mediterranean climate, whereas the rest of South Africa experience summer rainfall. Last but not least, so during winter, the South Atlantic high pressure migrates north, but during summer, it migrates south. Now, if you just quickly have a look at our question, why does this low pressure weather system have a greater impact on South Africa in the winter? It's because the South Atlantic high pressure migrates towards the north and it gives access for the mid latitude cyclone to be able to affect southwestern Cape. Guys, we have run out of time. Um, yes, very importantly, I wish we can continue, but unfortunately we can't. Please, please, please stay tuned next week, Thursday. And thank you for all the questions. There were so many questions. Sharon, unfortunately, I couldn't get to your question. Ukukle, uh, thank you. Numpilo, thank you for your questions. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time. Please send in those questions on uh, Facebook. Please WhatsApp us. We need these questions. But keep in mind, let's focus on terms to work. Focus on the content. I want to know questions about rural areas, for instance. I want to focus on the different types of rural settlements that we have. And then I want to focus on the migration, the rural urban migration, the movement. Please keep these questions in mind. Right? Look at the factors, the pull, the push factors. What pull people towards urban areas? What pushes people away from rural areas? And then as soon as we're done with these rural settlement questions, we need to focus on our urban settlement questions. Please guys, very important here. So let's just focus on terms to content. I really hope you, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I certainly did. And listen, make sure to keep doing the activities and revise. Thank you.